Johnny Erickson Tata was born as a normal child. In fact, she was pretty athletic. That all changed one day when she was about 19 years old. She dove into the Chesapeake Bay and misjudged the depth of the water. She dove in, hit her head, and was paralyzed from the shoulders down. In fact, she only survived the dive because a friend of hers went to the bottom and pulled her back up. Can you imagine spending two years in rehab trying to put your life back together after an accident like that? She writes about it and she says that she was angry and she was depressed and she was suicidal though she couldn't move her limbs and she couldn't do anything about it. Slowly she began to put her life back together to find her faith again. Sometime around there, a friend of hers in Bible study told her something that meant a lot to her, and she reflected on it 50 years after the accident. He said that God permits what he hates in order to accomplish what he loves. He used the idea of the cross as the example of this, that God does not approve of crucifixion and God does not approve of torture, but he uses it to bring good to this world. Johnny had to learn how to put her life back together. She learned how to paint using the paintbrush between her teeth and, and started selling her paintings. She started to sing and has recorded a number of albums. She started to, to write a number of books dealing with, with suffering and loss and disability. She started an amazing organization called Johnny and Friends where she works with special needs kids and adults and provides camps and provides learning opportunities for them. She does advocacy for those groups and writes and does radio shows and speaks all across the country trying to help people understand how to welcome people who are different than them into their church contexts. She even got married. Johnny has had this wonderful, fruitful life. God did not spare her the pain of her accident. He did not spare her the work of recovering from it. But he has brought a lot of good through it. With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before Him. I tell my trouble before Him. When my spirit faints within me, you know the way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. Look to the right and see. There is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. I've always been fascinated by the story of Johnny Erickson Tata. I think it's partially because I have a special needs brother and I've been involved in the special needs community and I appreciate what Johnny and friends have done over the years. But I also wonder about how I would handle the same story. How would I deal with the loss of my ability to move my limbs? How would I deal with two years of rehab trying to put my life back together? Could I come to the positive outlook that she had after such a terrible situation? And I have to admit, I'm, I'm not sure that I would. I think there would be a lot of four-letter words between me and God. I think there'd be a lot of struggle and a lot of anger and a lot of depression. A lot of times we feel that, don't we? when we go through things, when times get tough, when we get bad news. And we have this tendency to want to, to not say those things to God, as if we've got to keep our mouth clean and we don't want to offend God. And yet sometimes exactly what we're feeling is anger towards God. But the Bible is full of all these psalms and this whole book called Lamentations where people are expressing those exact kind of feelings. Where are you, God? Why didn't you do anything? It's like the Bible is encouraging us to share those kind of thoughts and feelings with God. I wonder if we need to do more of that. After all, God is big enough to handle it. And I wonder if maybe it's an act of faith when we can look at God and say, God, 
you were powerful enough to do something and you didn't. Now, those can be scary things to say out loud, so we keep them in, and I'm not sure that's healthy either. But God doesn't send all these evil things, but he does tend to bring good out of the bad things that happen in this life. Sometimes we don't get to see that good. Sometimes we don't get to understand it. But I believe God is working to bring good out of the bad in our lives. And sometimes we miss it just because we don't go ahead and let ourselves express to God what we're feeling. Sometimes we miss it because we're too busy feeling sorry for ourselves or we can't get past our anger. But I think God encourages us. The Bible encourages and gives example after example of us needing to be honest with God. And it's my prayer that we would find those things in our lives where God is doing good and bringing good out of the bad things. And it's also my encouragement to you that you would find ways to express those things, to express your feelings to God, because He's big enough. God can handle it. And maybe we need to share with each other more the pain and the anger that we feel. And maybe we need to watch and expect God to bring beauty and to bring love and bring goodness out of our pain, even though sometimes we don't feel like it. After all, that's how the world works. There's a fall and there's a winter and there's a time when the field doesn't grow any crop. Why? So that spring can come, so that God can teach, that God can grow and bring goodness and bring fruit out of our lives. And maybe sometimes the stop on that The breaks that are put on God's goodness from our bad times is that we don't go ahead and express ourselves to God. So let me encourage you in your prayer life and with each other to be honest, to speak plainly, because God is big enough to handle it and God loves you and wants to meet you in the process. Amen.